Hey everyone, welcome back, Alex here. Um, I've been doing some reading of the Bible, the Van Conversion Bible. I haven't actually read the other one. I tried reading the Old Testament, just didn't get into it enough. But this one is, is full of interesting good information, like how to wire electrics, and how to do carpentry in a van, and how to plan for a project like this. Planning, yeah, something that I didn't do. Now I would recommend that you get a book or you go on into web and do research and learn as much as you can about the project which you're about to take part in. Do that before you start, because I didn't do that and I run into problems every single day. The thing which I'm going to be tackling today is something that I'm very scared of ever since I got electrocuted by a wire, tried to jump over an electric fence and zapped my leg and then I went like a skeleton, flew off 25 yards into the bushes, landed on my back and broke a vertebrae. So I'm going to learn about electricity. I'm going to need a few different bits of equipment for my van build. I'm going to need to wire it in a certain way. So I'm going to read a bit more now and then get some bits of electrical equipment out, lay it down on my floor, and try and get an idea of how my van is going to be powered. Wires, fuses, kill switches, crimps, bus bars. What the heck are all these things? Somebody help me. I've set myself a little challenge. I really want to open up these boxes, but I'm only allowed to once I know what the thing does. That way, it's gonna force me to learn Okay, so battery. I opened that up the other day because I know what it does. It holds all the electricity. That thing is full of power. You can connect something to it and turn on a light. This is a lithium ion battery and it's a lot lighter than lead acid batteries. It's also more efficient because apparently you can run them down the whole way, whereas Lead acid, you're only meant to run like 50% capacity. Lithium iron is more expensive. This cost me like two times, three times as much as a lead acid battery would, but apparently it's better and worth it in the long term. So I'm gonna need to have a way of charging up this battery. Now I could charge it up in my house and then fill it up, take it in the van, and then it would last me a few hours, a few days maybe, depending on how much I used it but I want to be away from home for longer periods of time. So I've got to think about how it's going to be filled up whilst I'm on the road and off grid. Cause I want to be off grid in, in, in the wilderness and still have power. Firstly, I got a solar panel. The sun goes down onto the solar panel and electricity is created magically and then fills up the battery. Well, I don't think it's really as simple as that. In fact, you need something called a solar charge controller, which I think is what I got in one of these boxes. Smart solar charge controller. Now these I've learnt, regulate the voltage from the solar panels and use it to charge your batteries effectively whilst preventing overcharging. Sun comes down, hits the solar panel, then the electricity goes into this thing and then it regulates it and, and turns it into electricity that I can use. I can open it up as a reward. By the way, all this stuff here I bought from a website called 12 Volt Planet. I'll leave a link to them in the description if you wanna check them out. And it's got all these things. Oh wow, it connects to my phone. But solar power isn't the only way I'm going to get electricity because if it's cloudy or raining like it is about 98% of the time in England, then my solar panel isn't gonna to work too well. And that's where battery to battery chargers come in handy. So in any car, you've got a battery and it's a starter battery used to start the engine. And that battery is charged all the time whilst you're driving. And you can also link up the charging system to 
your other batteries. Orion TR Smart Isolated DC to DC Charger. Also connectable to Bluetooth, which is cool. These things connect your phone. Isn't that a wonderful modern world we live in? And it senses when your starter battery is full. Once it's full, it then switches to charging up your leisure battery whilst you're driving. How cool is that? So if you're going on a long road trip, you're just charging up your battery. I think that qualifies for another box opening. I think it's important when doing a project like this that you have a small understanding of everything. You don't need to know everything inside out. You don't need to know it, uh, all the specifics because otherwise your brain would be full of loads of stuff. But a slight understanding of how everything works I think is very valuable. They've all got these nice blue coverings. So how do you actually make use of the power from this battery? Because it's got no three pin plug sockets or USB things that go into it. Well, I just learned about inverters. I've got one just here. That's 12 volt. My computer runs on like the mains power in my house, which is 240 volt. So it's a lot higher voltage and you can't run that straight off a 12 volt battery. You need something to convert 12 volt electricity into 240 or 230 volts. And you do that with an inverter. This connects to the battery and then it means you can run any of your normal household appliances from the 12 volt battery. Every time I open one of these things, it comes with this packet of like, are these sweets? Definitely don't eat these. This, this is silica gel. Don't watch these videos for educational purposes. Wow, that's a big piece of stuff. A fuse box where all the fuses are. So I guess all the appliances that I run will go into the fuse box. And then if anything goes wrong, then the fuse blows rather than my whole van. This is the only thing which isn't blue. All these gadgets are very exciting. So now I've unboxed everything. That was the fun part. Now I've got to actually figure out how all these things work together and how all these things connect together so I can actually make a functioning electrical setup in my van. My brain was frazzled before today and now it's like completely crisped up, like crispy bacon on a barbecue. I think I'm gonna call an electrician and get some help. You watching might be qualified in electricity stuff or a professional woodworker and you'll be laughing at me, but not everyone is um, blessed with having skills like that. I've got to keep at it, keep persevering. This walk did me wonders. I feel a little bit more alive and a bit more positive. So I'm going to go back home and keep going with it. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to do it. I've had a really unproductive last few weeks. I've got hardly anything done. I've been feeling a bit lost with the whole project and I need to do something now which makes me feel like I'm getting somewhere. So I'm currently doing some measuring. I'm going to, oh, I can't I'm not do any measuring because I haven't got my tape measure. Oh dear. I got my notepad, a pen, saw, and then a tape measure. I'm gonna do some measuring and write down a list of all the wood that I need to get. And then I can just buy it and actually make some progress on this thing. I've been scribbling down all the measurements on this piece of paper. There's so many numbers there, I can't even remember what most of them are for. So pieces of ply come in shapes. 2,440 mil by 1,220 mil. And I wanna work out how much I can cut out of one of those pieces. I've created a sheet on Adobe Illustrator, which is the size of one of these sheets of plywood. Now all I need to do is draw squares or rectangles onto this piece, which will be the bits that I want to cut out. And then I can figure out how much I can get from one piece of ply. 
How much is this gonna cost? Wow, 473 pounds I'm going to spend on wood. Currently picking up the wood. I'm at Travis Perkins and there is a lot of wood here. What's your name? Keen. Keen here is helping me uh, sort out the wood. Bringing out the wood. My dad has got his van because I think it's slightly bigger, so the ply should fit inside. Three bits of 18 mil, yeah. I'm gonna make a bed out of this 18 mil ply. Right, we better get going. Thank Cheers. You no Thank you. This van build project isn't the only thing I've been doing. There's a reason why it's taking a load of time. I am not very good at concentrating. I got very distracted a few months ago and went on a road trip around Europe with a friend in his van. Uh, it was an incredible trip. We traveled to like 10 different countries in a week. Had so much fun and I'm so glad I did it. It just meant that the van project is now delayed a bit longer. So I got back from that trip and then instantly got distracted again. And for some reason, I just became obsessed with the idea of going to Naples and eating pizza. Naples is where pizza was born. It's the birthplace of this incredible round tomato-y thing. Flew out there and ordered loads of pizza. I was there for four days and I ate, I think, five or six pizzas, and I don't regret it one bit. There's a margarita, which is this one, which has mozzarella, basil, tomato sauce, and some olive oil. And then there's a miranera, oregano, garlic, tomato, and oil. And they look amazing, and it was so cool watching them make it. I got a pizza which was about that big for three euros 50, which is insane. That is so cheap. The tomato sauce is so sweet. Now for the marinero. Cool, that's nice. Amazing, absolutely incredible. So I got back home from Italy and then a few days later, I got on another plane and flew to the USA. The aim of this trip was to go fishing, catch some big fish and make a video, a film about fish from my brother's YouTube channel because he makes videos solely about fish and fishing. So we spent two weeks on this incredibly beautiful lake uh, in Idaho, which is really far northwest of the USA. And we went fishing, caught some really big fish, and I even managed to do something that I've wanted to do for quite a while, and that is off-roading in a 4x4. <sighs> this is epic. This, this thing is big. This is the first time I've ever driven like a proper American truck. Ah, oh, press brake, and then press start button, there. And away we go. Check out that reversing camera. That is such good quality. Look at all those nice flowers. Oh, we're just like driving on a track around the lake. I fell free. I'm getting too, too excited about being here. It's time to sort my sleeping situation. I've got this camp bed, it's like a fishing camp bed. It costs about 100 quid, and then I can simply place it down, like so. That folds out there, folds out there, and there we go. All I need to do is put a sleeping bag on top, and then I get a good night's sleep. Rainbow that way, and over this we've got the sunset.
Cheers, everyone. Good night, everyone. If I ever rained a lot, or it's just like dew or condensation. Anyway, I'm kind of soaked in my sleeping bag and it's soaked through into my legs. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the night inside there. Pelicans. Ah. Oh. 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 That was so much fun. And I could do more of this, definitely. But I would have to sort out a better sleeping setup because I got no sleep and I was freezing cold. I don't have a good run of luck when it comes to vehicle camping. Anyhow, I've got to head back to England soon to get on with normal life. I got back home from the USA and then I had some problems with my bees. Now, I became a beekeeper last year. And I think I got my bees about a year ago. And my aim was to make honey. I thought it would be quite an easy task, but it turns out to be a lot more time consuming and a lot more complex than I first thought. Things were going really well in the spring. My bees swarmed, I then caught the swarm, uh, put them in another box, I then had two beehives from one. Then things started to go wrong when I was out the country because they swarmed again, but there was no one there to catch them. So bees swarm, they leave the hive, and then if no one does anything about them, they then find their own home in a tree or something. So, so my bees left me. So I lost about half of my bees, which is a really bad thing because if you've got less bees, you've got less honey. So the amount of honey that I get this year is gonna be significantly reduced. But good news is the last few weeks, they've obviously had a lot of flowers to collect nectar from and they have been building up again. That is what I'm talking about. One whole side of the frame and the other side. It's a full frame of honey like this. Because it's all capped, it means it's at the right moisture level to take it. Like I could, if I wanted to, take it all now and eat it on toast. That's honey. I put my finger in to get, take some honey in. They're already busy sorting it out because they don't want it to spill everywhere. Last weekend, I had a really wholesome day. I woke up on Sunday morning. And I was like, what should I do? And I just felt, you know, when you just got a craving for something, I just wanted to drink a cold strawberry milkshake. And so I went out my house, drove about half an hour to this place where you can pick your own strawberries. This is a fascinating sport. Look at all these people I'm up against. All these keen strawberry pickers. And I'm gonna join them. First one. I want to make a strawberry milkshake. Sometimes the biggest ones are hiding where no one else has seen them. Look at them. Biggest strawberry of the day. Two hundred and thirty grams of strawberries. Two hundred and forty grams of milk. One tablespoon of sugar, a tiny bit of vanilla extract, and a load of ice cream. Will it blend? Oh. That is how you make strawberry milkshake. That milkshake was just so good. And then in the afternoon of that day, I harvested a load of my cucumbers because I've been growing some cucumbers this year. Cool, I think we've got enough cucumbers. Yeah, cucumbers and tomatoes actually, but the cucumbers have been going wild. I've had so many of them. I harvested a load and then I chopped them up and turned them into jarred pickles. I added a load of different spices and seeds, uh, some sugar and vinegar, and then popped them in a jar, sealed it up, and then I've left them for the last week. I actually have one in my sandwich today and it was very 
tasty. But yeah, it's a good way of preserving food that you grow because I'm not going to be able to eat all those cucumbers straight away. So that's my life recently. Quite busy, very exciting, can't complain. But now, all I need to do is not get distracted and I just need to focus on making my van into a camper because I do have a deadline, 1st of September, because I am going around Europe for a month. Let's get on with the van. My friend is coming over uh, to help me with cutting some of the wood. I've got an awful lot of ply sheets and I currently can't do anything with them because firstly, I have no tools. And secondly, my friend who does have tools, I, uh, I wanted to drive over to his workshop I tried to put the ply in my van and guess what? It doesn't actually fit. Luckily, my friend is coming over here with some tools. This is gonna be the workshop. Beautiful place to uh, spend the day. I've made so many notes on the dimensions of things. I can't remember what or the actual final design. It must be this one because this is the last, no, no, this one, because this is the last page I wrote on. And then here, myself and my friend Rollo made up a, a 3D image. So we both know kind of roughly what we're aiming for. It's really handy having this. This is the piece of ply that I took out of the van. Um, we're using it as a, like a template and a guide for when we cut the real pieces of ply. So my van is gonna be lined with ply. Some people, like really clever people, they make really nice looking cladding, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just using ply. Simple, easier, something that I can get my head around. Got my tape measure, got my Stanley, got my pencil. Look at that. Got the speed square. That's really cool. You know, I might start wearing one of them like just in my day to day. Yeah, have a, have a fork, have a spoon. Yeah, a fork, spoon, plate, um, some Pringles. Banana. I might get some looks if I wear one of those out in the street. I would love to see it, Alex. I already think you should do that. Yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try it. Ply is an interesting material because it's, it's like a number of layers of sheets of wood. Like, I do you know how they make it? They get like a whole tree trunk yeah. and they plane it down so it's a perfect cylinder. Yeah. And once it's planed down, they get like a little um, plane or like blade and it takes off these strips. So it's like two mil thick and it like, they spin the log really, really fast and then they just engage this tiny little blade and it shoots out like meters and meters Whoa. a second, like 30 meters a second or something of two mil wood. So it turns from a cylinder into like Wow. 400 meters of two mil wood. Whoa, I did not think that's yeah. how they... And that's why you see the repeat grain. Ah. So you see how it like repeats itself? Because that is, that's... that's, the tree's like that, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 and that's just the... And, wow. <laughs> First tool is a track saw. USP of a track saw is what? The tracks. And, and you can cut perfectly straight lines because you run the saw along a straight track. An incredible invention. And that, that is it. That's the, the track. There you go. It runs along. But first we need 240 volt. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, I've got an extension lead. I messed up. I don't own a extension cable. And Rollo just expected me to because, you know, most people probably would. But I don't. So he's gone back to his house to uh, to grab one. Cheers, Rollo. Sorry, you're having to deal with my incompetence. Um, you're gonna have to get used to it. All right. Whee! Check out. Oh, what do we have here? So up here, we I guess we have. Yeah. Out here. You got it? Yeah. Take two. Okay. 
think of this, we've got the first bit of ply in place and it fits very nicely. This is flush up to here. There's these bits which cut into the, there used to be some cup holders in that bit and that bit. So that ply covers there. We just need to have one more piece of ply at the back and then that's the floor kind of done. And this is really, uh, that's really sturdy and nice. Wow, feels good, making progress, finally. Just because the other bit of ply that we worked off was very tight. But no, you know what, mate? We might be okay. Oh, look at that. We got a ply on the floor. That feels good. These door panels that we're going to do will involve a little bit more mass and annoyingness because it's a very odd shape with lots of corners and uh, an indent for the handle to open the door. This camera rolling because if it if it fits then um, I'm gonna open a bottle of champagne. It was close. See ya. We got the floor cut. We got one of the door panels cut. But I have a problem. My friend Rollo, he actually lives in Bristol. He's back home visiting family, but he's gonna be going. Today gave me a little bit of confidence. I learned a bit about some of the tools that he was using and how to cut stuff. You gotta remember, I'm a absolute novice. I'm going to go to the shop tomorrow, I think, and, and buy some, some of my own tools. I'm gonna be a, a, a tool owner, and then I'm gonna get to work cutting more of this wood down, because I've got an awful lot of wood here, and I need to cut it down to size, get as much of this woodwork done as possible. Catch you tomorrow.